I was bald, like completely bald. It was shocking, insane amount of steroid injections into my head, like 50, 60 injections into my scalp. Painful, scary, heartbreaking. I'm not interested in putting chemicals in my body. There's no purpose for me. If it's gonna cause something else, ruin my liver, or one day I might get cancer. Like, I'm like, you know what? No, I have two young babies. This is not worth it. I'm gonna be bald and I'm gonna figure out wig. And that's what I did. At the same time, that's when I said, you know what? I also never lost all my baby weight. It's time to fix myself. It's time to love myself. If I can't control my hair, then I can control my body though. I can say, no to the drug, I can work out, I can change a little bit of my lifestyle, be happy about myself in another way. Down the street there was a Fit Body Boot Camp. You feel like you're accomplishing something and that you're the boss of yourself. I'm in charge of myself, I'm the only one that can fix this. What kind of example am I as a mom if I'm sad and I don't want to be seen and I'm not taking pictures with my children? Like, that's not okay. Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. I am your host, Mary Catherine, and today we have a very special guest. We have a client from Mission Viejo Fit Body Bootcamp who was actually referred to me by one of our awesome coaches, Jake. He sent over a message and said, you need to interview one of our clients who has been with us for over four years for the podcast. She's such an inspiration. She's a viral sensation on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And she is a female spokesperson for women with alopecia. And so today we have Myrna Wilson joining us, and she is going to walk us through her journey with alopecia in which she was diagnosed after having her two boys in her early 30s. And this is such an inspiring episode, you guys. She is just, she's a badass. She takes care of herself in and outside of the gym. She is a spokesperson for women, female empowerment, and she is just doing all the things. So tune in for this exciting episode. So welcome awesome. Myrna, to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited. Yes. I'm so excited to have you. And like, I absolutely love your Instagram. Like you're just so positive. I love all of your content that you share, especially like right now, like, you know, we're getting out of the holidays. You have posted so much great content around like just home decor and like yep. parties, and holidays. So I love all of that. But then also love seeing your journey, your hair loss journey, and your journey to health and wellness and taking care of yourself. Yeah. And so you and I have spoken offline a few times now, and I know your story, but our listeners, like they need to know who Myrna is. And so I want you to just start right after you had kids, like tell us how everything happened. So um, I had two beautiful boys and I'm, um, I'm in my, you know, early thirties. Um, I had my first son at 30. I had my second son at 32 and I started to notice that I had like the tiniest little bald patch missing in the back of my hair and then it would grow back. And then, um, part of my eyebrow fell out and I was like, that's weird. Maybe I'm being like really aggressive with my eyebrow pencil. Like that's super weird. I brought it up a couple of times to um, my OBGYN because that's who I was seeing more frequently because I had just had children. And she was like, oh, totally normal. Your hormones are all out of whack because you're breastfeeding and your body's still not back to, you know, what it was. So um, just be patient. It will, you know, kind of all subside. Well, in 2017, uh, my son was a year old. I was still breastfeeding him and I noticed more than one patch and it was lots of patches over the course of like six months and like heavy thinning throughout. Um, and the doctor was just like, okay, you should stop breastfeeding. I think the hormones are just completely out of whack. So I did. And from there, from like June of 2017 to November of 2017, I was bald, like completely bald. And it was shocking all throughout the whole, you know, year of going to doctors, going to dermatologists, getting in like insane amount of um, steroid injections into my head. Like we're talking about every time I would go see my dermatologist, it would be like 
50, 60 injections into my scalp. Painful, scary, heartbreaking because you want this like, you know, immediate change. You want to be like, oh my God, look at me. I'm like a chia pet. Like all my hair is growing back, you know, and it wasn't like it was worse and I was bald. Um, and the doctor, I like the dermatologist was like an alopecia specialist and she was on, I was like, honestly, how long until I see results from your injections? And she was super, super honest. And she was like, honestly, like, I don't guarantee it. Like if we're not seeing after, you know, we've, we've done these injections, you know, every four weeks for the last, you know, three months, you're still bald. We're not seeing any sprouting. It's just like, you're bald. And um, she was like, your body will regrow its hair when it wants to. And that's the honest truth. And then I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done injecting my body, putting chemicals in it for not a guaranteed, you know, response or something that's actually going to fix it. So I stopped everything. My husband and I talked about it. Um, they even offered me like a clinical trial. There's like lots of medications that are, you know, fast forward. It's been you know, six years since that started, but there's a lot of drugs that are on the market that will regrow your hair. And they were discovered by accident, just kind of like, you know, how other drugs have been discovered by accident that help people. Their their intention was for one thing. And then lo and behold, you're, you have hair growth. I'm not interested in putting chemicals in my body. I, I just, there, there's no purpose for me. If it's going to cause something else, you know, it's going to um, potentially ruin my liver or one day, who knows, you might get cancer. Like, I'm like, you know what? No, I have two young babies. This is not worth it. I'm going to be bald and I'm going to figure out wigs. I'm going to, I'm going to look into wigs. And that's what I did. And at the same time, that's when I said, you know what? I also never lost all my baby weight, my baby weight. Um, it's time to you know, fix myself. It's time to love myself. If I can't control my hair, if that's one thing I can't control, that I can control my body though. I can control, I can say no to the drugs. I can uh, work out. I can change a little bit of my lifestyle and be happy about myself in another way. So that's what I did. I, uh, we had just moved to Mission Viejo. I go to Mission Viejo, Mission Viejo Fit Body Boot Camp. And down the street, there was a Fit Body Boot Camp on the building. And I was like, huh, like, I'm not really like a gym person. Like, I've never have been. I've always been the person that was like, working out's not for me. You know what I mean? I'll try all the fad diets. I'll do the, you know, stupid cleanses and whatever. Nothing ever sticks. It's that's all yeah. just, you know, you're losing water weight. And then like in, you know, a month, you're like, oh my God, I gained all that weight back. That's so weird. <laughs> you know, the, all of it's a fad. And so I said, you know, I'm gonna do it the real way this time. And I joined the um, New Year Challenge. It was in 2019. Um, and mind you, I'm telling you, I lost my hair in 2017. It took me a hot minute. Like I was not confident. I had a, I had to figure out myself. I had to get the, you know, motivation first of all, but second of all, like I had to be a little bit more confident because now we're talking about going to the gym and you're wearing a wig. Okay, like no. Okay. I've never done that before either. So I had to figure that part of my life out. So it took me a hot minute. So it was January of 2019. I had a whole year of playing with my wigs, a whole year of figuring out what wigs fit on me. It took a while because I was embarrassed. So I signed up for this challenge and I was like, Mirna, you're going to do this. It's going to be okay. And I went and that's where I met Everybody at Fit Body, I don't think anybody knew I was wearing a wig. I wore a headband, um, a thick headband, which I still wear to this day. A thick headband on my head that kept my wig in place, and I did it. I went in there. I joined the challenge. Um, it was six weeks. I followed it to a T. I lost like 11 pounds the first go around, and then um, I kept going. I signed up as like a member. It wasn't just I, – I didn't just sign up for the six-week challenge. I actually became a member. And I was committed. I was going four days a week. I would go, you know, if it was, if the kids had some sort of activity in the morning, I made sure I went in the afternoon. I went on the weekends. And over the course of a year, I lost 25 pounds. And it's been like that consistently. So I'm, I, I, I've stayed in that range. Um, you know, of course, you fluctuate here and there five pounds, but like, 
it's been the best thing I ever did for myself because everybody that's known me um, throughout the years, friends from high school, they all say, you look the best shape of your life because even when I was younger, I was never like the skinniest girl. I was never, I never had the best arms. I, I was never like super overweight, but I was never fit. And I'm fit now. I have strong arms. I have a strong back. I have strong legs. Like it's incredible. And that is truly something that I can control. I can't control my hair. I still don't have hair, like a full head of hair. This is a wig. Um, and I, I rotate my wigs. So, you know, this, I, I think fitness helped me ac accept my hair loss because I was I was able to be confident about other parts of my body and my life other than, you know, my lack of hair. <laughs> yeah. You are a badass. Like I am Thank so you. inspired by you in so many different ways. And I have so many questions and I want to start okay. with when you were diagnosed with alopecia, did you feel at that time, like, did you have that hope that it was just going to get better? And oh. like, did you like talk about your mindset during that because i i'm just imagining myself like if that yeah. would happen i guess i would have still been holding on to some sort of hope that this is just temporary and it's yeah. and it's going to get better and yeah. then let's also I, I do want you to educate our listeners like is it something that you can outgrow and how does your body just all of a sudden you know go through this yeah. after having children Okay, so I'll start with like, what is alopecia? So yeah. alopecia is your body attacking your hair follicles. Your body is thinking that your hair follicles are foreign. Your body is so amazing, the human body is. And when it, you know, notices something that's off, it will attack it and kill it just like it does a cold. It fights your viruses. It does all that. Well, my body mistakenly thought my hair was a foreign object and it was expelling it from my body. And that is because it's an autoimmune disorder. So something triggered an autoimmune response in my body and my doctors, they feel like that was pregnancy. They felt like pregnancy. I always probably had autoimmune in my body. It runs in my family. My, uh, my mom had lupus when um, she's been in remission for like 20 years, but she had lupus of the skin and my grandma, so that's my maternal side. And then my grandma, my dad's mother had lupus of the muscles. So I clearly have on both sides, I have autoimmune issues. So they were probably dormant for my whole life. I had hair my whole life. I, everything was normal, a healthy person. And um, they, they think that pregnancy was what triggered this autoimmune response. My body was just completely in shock after pregnancy. And this is what happened. The, at first, when it started happening, they, like I told you in the beginning of the podcast, um, the doctor was like, oh, don't worry. It's common. Your body's out of whack. It will grow back. No big deal. So I was in complete delusion. I was unrealistic and I was like, okay, wear a ball cap. No big deal. Put extensions in. Like remember when yeah. clip and extensions were like all the rage? Well, yeah. clip and extensions were my go-to. I was like, okay, if I put in some of that Batiste, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like a root yeah. spray. I root <laughs> spray my whole head. I put my <laughs> clip ins and I looked like I had hair. So it was like, fine. Well, then it got so bad that it was, there's no, you can't clip your hair to nothing. So like you can't clip in extensions to nothing. So they would just like slide off because my hair was like so fine. And I was like, okay, well, this is not good. And I'm typically a very happy person. I'm very happy. I'm very bubbly. I'm very outgoing. Um, this was a very dark time for me. I was not myself. I was very like, okay, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to that party. I'm not doing any of that my frame of mind changed because I was embarrassed. I was, you know, I didn't want anyone to find out the secret. Um, I wore hats all the time, hats, hats, hats. And there finally gets to a point where you're like, okay, I can't wear a hat to like, you know, a friend's birthday dinner. You know what I mean? Like a ball cap. So that's when I finally decided to go and get a wig. But yeah, like in that time when like the doctor was like, you know, telling me, oh, we'll just inject you, no big deal. I needed someone to be honest because there is women that lose their hair. They get alopecia spots and they do a couple injections and their hair grows back. Well, that's typically like from stress or uh, maybe like a thyroid problem. So they'll start taking medication. 
mine was an autoimmune like response. So until my body decided that it was done fighting its own self, my hair wasn't going to start growing back. So I, at that time was unrealistic. I should have probably started looking for a wig a lot sooner than I did. And that's probably why it took me so long to actually even decide to um, take control of my life in another way, which was my, my body, my, my fitness uh, was because I was in denial. You know what I mean? There was a lot of in my head, I'm like, oh, it's going to be fine. Like it's going to grow back. Like, you know, and that's not what happened. How, what did you, so in the, when you d decided to just accept it, like say, okay, I'm, I'm not going to continue to get the injections and I'm going to accept this and I'm going to find a wig and you're going to embrace this new journey that you're on. Did you find that it was difficult to share it with other people? Like, did you keep it to yourself or did you tell people about it? And like, when you went to fit body, were you open about it? So, um, in the beginning, it was just my closest family, like, and my, like my best friends. And I think that's what saved me in the very beginning was that I had the support of my husband that was so loving and said, like, you're still so beautiful. Like, I love you so much, you know, regardless, um, my mm -hmm. friends who were like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, but you know, we're here for you. So when I'm around my friends, I, I didn't keep it a secret from my friends, which I know from if like. I'll tell you guys more about my mama's bald page on Instagram, but there's a lot of women that hide it like indefinitely. It's a secret, like period, the end. They don't want anyone to know. And I think that's one of the things when it was a secret, that's when it like was very painful for me because you're so alone and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone to find out the secret. So it makes it that much harder to accept because you're like so petrified that someone's going to discover what you're hiding in the beginning I did keep it a secret um it was a secret for a long time at the gym like I'm talking a long time and it changed what the the <laughs> it wasn't a secret with Jake anymore because Jake complimented me on my hair one day and I was like finally I was like Jake it's a wig I wear wigs I'm bald and he's like stop it right now and I'm like I swear I am bald I wear wigs and this is what it is and he was like oh my God, come in here bald. And I'm like, no, I'm never coming in here bald. <laughs> like never working out bald. And yeah. he's just always been so positive. He's always like, oh my God, you should just come in here without your wig on. But it's been, a, I don't know that everybody at the gym right now knows that I wear a wig. I think a lot of people do because Jake will like full on put it on blast and be like, Mirna's an influencer, follow her. Like he'll like totally do it. But um, yeah, like in the, I believe keeping a secret anything in your life if you're hiding something it makes that your life that much more difficult and like that's mm -hmm. what I think changed the trajectory of my hair loss and the journey and it becoming a positive thing was it not becoming not being a secret anymore and that's where I come into I took uh, the craziest step and that was starting an Instagram page so I have my regular Instagram page, which is my family page where I post pictures of my children and my family and the things that we do. And then I started a new page, which was a way for me to have my own therapy about my hair loss. And that was to connect and relate to other women who have hair loss. And I didn't know anybody else in my life who have lost, who, had, who had thinning hair or even who had lost their hair at this point in my life. I'm a young 32 year old mother and yeah. I'm, you know, looking at wigs or trying to figure out how to make my legs, wigs look realistic, no one in my life could understand what I'm going through at, at all. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go on Instagram and I'm going to find people that are like me and I'm going to share my journey. And maybe at the same time, I could help others at the same time. Like my journey relating to someone really is helpful. When you can say, oh my gosh, me too. I did not like, I did not know how helpful that would be until I actually did it. When, when you're talking to other ladies who are your age and they're like, I lost my hair after my kids too. Oh my God. I got injections too. It didn't work for me either. You don't feel so like a weirdo because at, mm -hmm. at, there's a time where you're like, oh my God, I am such like, oof. I hate, I hate how I look. I hate looking in the mirror. I don't even know if my wig looks good and I don't even know if I'm doing this right. You know, I started sharing about that and I started posting pictures of my wigs and trying different styles out and lo and behold, it helped a lot of people and it's become a thing. And 
I'm so grateful for it. Like I'm proud. I'm proud to be a hair loss person, a person that's dealing with hair loss. Like I never six years ago when this happened, would I be like, Oh my God, you're going to be happy one day that you went bald. Like never would I have thought that I would say that, but like, if anybody can do it, it was me. And like, I really feel like that was, that's my purpose is to like help other women. So I'm grateful to have had hair loss. <laughs> it's so weird to say that. <laughs> and, and I love, I, I love how you mentioned, you know, your support system. And I want to unpack that a little bit okay. because we have clients, Jim, that they're suffering with something, not the same as you, but maybe right. they're suffering with something. And they sometimes they'll join Fitbody and then they do feel like they have this community to lean on and that they have someone else that they might not necessarily be going through the exact, the exact same journey, but they have that support. Did you right. feel like once you started going to fit body and taking care of your body and your mental health as well, like, did you feel like that also helped in your journey to be like, okay, this is my life and I'm going to start just embracing it? 100%. Like, like, a, like I said earlier, like, I feel like when you take control of your own journey, like whether it be in fitness or hair loss or whatever, you feel like you're accomplishing something and that you're the, the boss of yourself. And, you know, like it, whether it be health issues or whatever, and you've had to make this change, you've had to, you know, oh, your doctor tells you, oh, you need to lose weight. Like you're not healthy. You know what I mean? Right. That's kind of, it's, it's so relative. Like that, that's so it's the same thing. It's like, okay, I'm in charge of myself. I, I'm the only one that can fix this. And I felt that same way. I'm the only one that can fix my frame of mind. I have to love myself. What kind of example am I as a mom, a young mom, if I'm sad and I don't want to be seen and I'm not taking pictures with my children, like that's not okay. Like I need to be present and you got to figure the damn thing out. Like you can't, just sit there and be sad for yourself. You have to, you have to, that's the only way to overcome things is you take control and you say, I'm this, I'm going to make the best of it that I'm going to, that, that it's going to be. And that's what I did. I became, you know, super involved in the hair loss community and I figured out wigs. They, they looked like crap in the beginning. Let me, let me tell you, I, I wish I could show you guys a little reel of all the different ugly wigs that I wore. I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. I didn't have like a friend that was like, girl, that is ugly. Everybody yeah. was so supportive. I'm like, oh my God, you look so cute. And it's like, no, I don't. I don't look cute. You just don't know what to say because like the only option is to be bald or this. And it was going to be that. You know what I mean? It takes time. It's like, it developed my hair, my hair game developed. And you know, like same thing the beginning of your, I think of a fitness journey, you don't see immediate like results, right? Like yeah. it takes time. And I, I love all those Instagram reels that are like, I went to the gym today and I ate a salad. I'm waiting for my, you know, beautiful bod to show up. You know what I mean? Like after they one just... workout and after one salad, <laughs> like it takes time. It took time for me to accept myself. It took, it wasn't like a overnight. And I don't think your fitness journey is overnight for me. I think yeah. that they were like really ingrained in each other because I needed to love myself and I think feeling good and being healthy is a big part of that. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and you compounded wins, like you started taking care of yourself. You started seeing the results and you started enjoying the way it was making you feel the way it made yep. you look. And then it, it's a snowball effect and it mm -hmm. just started to compound. And yep. I really, I want to point out how you mentioned that when you started your mama is bald page you felt like there were women that were coming out and saying like, oh, you know, I'm experiencing this too, but they were in hiding and yep. they are hiding this part of themselves, which I can imagine would feel very lonely, very mm -hmm. isolated. Yep. And so I think the message to our audience here is like, you've got to come out of hiding because if you're going to keep this hidden forever, it's always going to be something that you're internally dealing with on your own. And we all know that there's so much power in having support from other people. Oh, and yeah. it doesn't matter. Like you said, you know, people would say, oh, your hair looks great. And you're like, no, it looks like shit. But they, yeah. supported, <laughs> they yep. supported you. And like, that's what you need. And, it, and, and yep. you know, like if they're lying, like whatever, you know, but, but right. they're supporting you. Like you knew, like 
you know, they're in my corner and everybody 100%. needs that. And I think that's so powerful that you started that page. Was it, what, what did you feel like when you started it? Because like, I know for me, even like on my Instagram journey and stuff, sharing parts of your personal life that has been so private can be a little scary. Like you can post oh, something yeah. and then you're instantly like, Ooh, should I have posted that? Like, what are people going to think? Talk oh, to us for a little sure. bit about that. Well, yeah. the wild part is like share, showing your bald head on Instagram. It's such a wild thing because you're getting so much good feedback. Oh my God, you're beautiful. You're this, you're that. And you're like, Oh my God. But then like, it's one thing to share. And this, this is the ironic part about my mama is bald page versus my private Mirna page. Like my family page is I was so open on mama is bald because I didn't really know who was following me. Those, those are not my people, right? Um, yeah. But I had never shown my bald head on my private page, people that knew me from high school, people, you know, the old coworkers, all those things. And it took time for that to develop too. It's so weird. It's like, I'm okay sharing my baldness with the public, but I'm not okay with sharing my baldness with my people that have known me my whole life. It's like such a weird, weird thing that you have to like, go through yourself to deal like with. deal with and accept and share the reality is everyone is so sweet and so cool about it just like like what you said like you're a badass like they did they said that to me you're a badass that's amazing that you're that you're doing this that you're being an example for other people and it's like so crazy because you sit there and you're like you create all these that self-talk that's negative. Oh my God, they're going to think it, I'm ugly. They're going to talk about me. They're going to be like, ew, did you see what happened to Myrna? Ew. No one says that. No one talks negatively no. about you. If they see you going through something and you're being vulnerable and being like, this is the shit that I'm going through. It's awful. I hope you never have to go through this, but I want to share it in case someone else is so I can help you. There's not one person that's going to be like, you're an idiot. No one's going to say yeah. that. Everyone's going to be like, you're amazing. Good for you, yeah. you know, well, and, that, and that is with anything in life. It could be with anything. Hey, I'm going through a divorce. I'm embarrassed. You know what I mean? My marriage is over. Hey, I've gained, you know, 40 pounds. I'm not happy with myself, but I'm going to share it because I want some support. All of it. Everyone's going to be like, wow, good for you for being vulnerable. Good for you. No one's going to look at you in a negative way. We say that to ourselves. We tell ourselves people are going to talk about me in a negative way. No one does. No one does. Everyone's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and two, like, we definitely are living in a world right now where it is easy to start an Instagram page and connect with people. It's easier than it has ever been. But there yep. are some people that they're not going to, they're not going to do that. They're not going to go start an Instagram page around, you know, maybe they suffer with mental health and they want the support there. Like they may just, it might start with them just telling a friend about it and having right. the support there. Um, but you know, I just want to note that like, you know, you have to also take social media with a grain of salt too, because sometimes people might be going through something behind the scenes and they don't share that. And you think they're living this, this perfect life. And so 100%. I definitely want our listeners, listeners to think about that because I am so guilty of that. Like you'll see people and they have the perfect skin and the perfect body and they have the morning routine and their kids sleep through the night. And I'm just like, how are you yeah. doing it all? And yeah. I have literally had to like coach myself to say like, that's just one of their days. The other six days a week, it might not look anything like that. And I know that's how it is for my life too. Like I might share like, this is what my life looks like this day, this one perfect, beautiful day, but it's not always like that. It's not no, always- No, 100%. You're 100%. Right. And that's not to say that I don't get weirdos that like tell me oh, sure. <laughs> weird stuff. Like it's weird. Like, oh, I hate your eyebrows. I'm like, I didn't ask you. <laughs> like, that's your opinion. I don't care. Like, you know, people who are like, oh, if you if you're so um, if you're trying to normalize hair loss, then why do you even wear a wig? It's like, oh, my God, like you can't make everybody happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is what it is. But you're absolutely correct. Like. No, I, I like not everyone's life is perfect. There is behind the scenes of real life. Everybody has a real life that, you know, has struggles and all the things. So yes, you have to consider that as well. It's not all peaches and cream for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Nobody has a perfect life. 
Yeah. Well, Mirna, I love everything that you're doing right now. Is there anything that you would want to leave our audience with um, when it comes to like empowering women, or maybe one of our listeners is just suffering with something internally by themselves, they're hiding and they feel alone. What would you share with them? I think that's the same thing that I've always, what I would share and what my uh, number one thing that I like to give advice about when it comes to hair loss or whatever is don't do it alone. Like, you know, just rely on someone, talk to someone, um, don't keep secrets. I think that opening up and having someone, whether it be a public page on Instagram or your best friend, your husband, a coworker, opening up and sharing and not feeling alone is so helpful in your journey. Having a buddy that can really be in your corner, that is the way that you can really overcome a lot if you have someone in your corner. So don't do it alone. I love that so much. Well, Mirna, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. I know that our audience is going to get incredible value out of this and you are doing amazing things and I cannot wait to continue to watch your journey on Mama is Bald. I just, I love you so much. (laughs) And and that is her Instagram, but where can our listeners find you? So that's my Instagram handle. That's um, mama.is.bald. I'm on TikTok and on YouTube shorts just sharing my journey, sharing different hair stuff, fitness stuff, just try to be relatable for moms out there. Um, That's just what I like to do. I like to just be an inspiration to people and keep it positive. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners for listening to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. As always, make sure to check out our channel on YouTube, subscribe to our channel on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and share this episode with all of your friends. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much. 